So in this video, let's talk about how consciousness is actually the solution to all your problems. Matter of fact, it's the only real solution and what it means to be more conscious and uh, how you get there. So let's dive right in. What is consciousness really about and why does it work so well, particularly with women? Let's talk about with women because a lot of my clients are here for women, but it could be for anything. It could be for money, it could be for health, it could be for relationships, not just getting a date. It could be, like I said, for anything. As you raise your consciousness, you raise your ability to understand a topic. You raise your ability to really look at a topic and see all sides and see the solutions. As you raise your consciousness, the solution becomes obvious. I remember when Lester Levinson, if you know who he is, he was actually the founder of Sedona Method. It was a talk he was giving. And in the talk, he said that the solution to real problems in the world is going to be in the raising of consciousness. It's not in the left. It's not in the right. It's not in one belief system or another. It's actually the raising of the consciousness so you can see the real whole picture through awareness, this, this deep inner awareness. Well, for you, it's the same thing. For a lot of you that are working on your relationship to women, it's your ability to see all the ways you're making your growth with women hard. If you're out there blaming women for your dating life, if you're out there blaming the world for your dating life, if you're out there blaming feminism or globalism or I don't know, whatever else for your dating life, for your money life, for whatever life you have, then you're actually giving your power away and you're making it really hard. You're presupposing in the mind that there's something external that has control of my life that keeps me from being able to do what I need to do to change my life in a way so that I can bring dates in, so that I can get an amazing partner, so that I can make money. And that's absolutely not true. I'm not saying that there isn't stuff like that out there affecting you. I'm not saying there isn't women out there that are really into some ideology that makes it really hard to date them or and vice versa. There's men out there the same way. I'm not saying there aren't people out there trying to steal money. And I'm not saying the government isn't trying to take your money all the time. What I'm saying is that as you raise consciousness, all of that becomes obvious and you just don't dance that dance anymore. You don't play that game. You step outside of it. You actually start finding the women that don't play that game either because you can see it now. You see the dance for what it is as a man who's working on his dating, working on relationships. And as you start to step away and say, I'm not going to dance that dance with women that are difficult and painful in this area anymore. And you start drawing these amazing, beautiful women into your life. You start becoming a match for women that actually want an awesome man in their life because you become a match for, for those types of women. You see, there's every type of belief system out there. If you go out there and look at money, it's such a great example. I can walk down this street right here where I live in Bozeman, Montana, and I can see wealthy people and how they think. I can hang out with them. I can talk to them. Really wealthy people. There's some really successful people here. I can go out and find homeless people. I can find people that are in the middle of the spectrum. And I can hear their belief systems in the way they look at the world, the way they talk about the world, the way they see their world. If you want to raise consciousness in any given area, you have to, and hear this part, you have to unattach your emotional reactivity to the thing at large. In the case of money, you can't become reactive to money, broke, poor, somewhere in between, a bill. You have to get to the point where you can keep your heart open and free. That's the raising of consciousness. If not, if you're getting triggered every time you get a bill, you're getting triggered every time you have to pay the check at the restaurant, you're getting triggered every time you as a man go on a date with a beautiful woman and you have to pay the bill, let's say, then you're unconscious in that area. Now, this doesn't mean that you become a doormat. This just means that you don't get triggered anymore. You keep your heart open and you say, you know, I went out with this woman and it just didn't feel right. It felt like she's really just looking for a man with money and she's not really looking for a real connection with a real human being. And you'll see it right away. You'll see it right from the beginning of the date. You'll probably see it before you actually ever go on a date with her if you're conscious enough. But if you're unconscious, you'll get seduced into the games of the world. If you're unconscious around money and you're really reactive to money and you're really triggered by money every time you have to spend a dollar, you're probably going to get yourself into situations 
where you're going to get more triggered because you're going to focus whatever you focus on expands. And then you're going to end up spending more and more money in areas you didn't mean to spend money and you're going to get more triggered, more triggered, more triggered, which is only going to amplify the problem. And because you can't see this going on, you're getting wrapped up in the emotional reaction, then this becomes something that takes you for a ride. That's what unconsciousness is. It's taking you for a ride. But if you're conscious, you'll see the pattern as it starts. Oh, look, I just got triggered again. And then you can use stuff like releasing, letting go to stop it. Can I welcome that part of me that's triggered? Can I open my heart? Can I see that I'm creating that? Can I see if I'm making it right or wrong, good or bad? Can I just sit with that for a little bit? And I do. And I just sit with it. And and the first step in this process is really getting comfortable looking right at what I'm uncomfortable with. You see, if I can look right at it and be with it and say, you know what? I don't like the way this feels. I don't like the way my dating life feels, but I can look right at the discomfort. I can get around the beautiful women and I can say, you know what? I'm getting triggered right now. I can get around feeling like I got taken advantage of by a woman I bought a drink for. And I can say, can I look right at the feeling of being triggered? And can I accept it for what it is? Can I say, hey, in some way, shape or form, I drew this into my life. I created this. I don't like it, but I can look at it. Step number two is when that happens is, can I just be with it for a little bit and start to let go of that attachment or that aversion, that part that says, this is wrong, this is bad. Can I just let go of that and say, it just is, or the attachment, I've got to get that beautiful woman on a date to prove I'm good enough. No, can I let that go? Can I just let all of that go? Or I've got to have a certain amount of money in my bank account, whatever it is. And can I just be with it? So in that second step, you're actually letting go of attachment and aversion. And you're just opening your heart again and saying, not only can I handle it, I can now let go of the attachment and the aversion and start to just become neutral with it. I can I can be like, okay, I can see that happening. Not only can I handle it, but it is what it is. And then the third step, and this is where you really start opening your heart. And this is the part for letting go that really cleans everything up. Can I look at it with love, appreciation, curiosity, joy, something in the highest level of emotions, you know, what we call the courage, acceptance, love, peace emotions, the cap emotions. If you can get up there and you can start to look at this situation with love or with peace or with joy or with appreciation, and you can start to open your heart and laugh at it and just be like, hmm, it is what it is. It's funny. It is. It's interesting. It's part of life then that's when your consciousness, what we talked about earlier in the video, will start to come around and you'll start to see solutions and opportunity. You won't let yourself, let's say you got taken advantage of one night by somebody that used you for money on a dinner date as a guy. You'll start to see the patterns and you'll be like, oh, I can see how that happened. Well, it happened. And then the next time that starts to come up, you won't get pulled into it again. You'll be like, oh, there it is again. I see it. I'm going to let that go this time. I'm going to go over there and hang out with this other beautiful woman that is actually super sweet and loving because now I can see and feel the difference because I developed consciousness in this area. And as you raise the consciousness, as you become non-reactive to the situations, as you don't make them a big deal, as you don't scream, yell, announce to the world, I got to fight against this, I got to scream against this, which is another form of unconsciousness. I got to go out and tell all women that they're bad and and I got to fight against feminism and especially the third wave feminists. And I'm not saying none of that stuff exists. Just you don't have to fight it. And yeah, I'm going to go out and appreciate and love the really feminine women that are giving and loving and sweet. Because there's just as many or more of those out there if you actually look for them. Then everything begins to change. Naturally, with your open heart, you get drawn into the people that think like you, that want to hang out with you because you're not attached to all the ways you don't want to be, you're open and loving like a magnet drawing to you the ways you do want to be and the type of people you want to be with. Think about it. When you're unconscious and you're averse and you're attached and you're pulling and you're pushing, you're actually thinking constantly about the things you don't want, bringing them into your reality like the reverse side of a magnet bringing more struggles with money into your reality because you can't stop thinking about the struggles of money because there's so much attachment or bringing women that take advantage of you or bringing in how hard it is to meet women because they're so difficult to meet 
and you're putting that energy out there and you're making it difficult. You're picking the difficult women, almost like scanning for unconsciously the women that are going to be most difficult. Or you have walls up when you walk up because you're trying to protect yourself and you're pushing the women away, which I've done videos on, causing the women to react poorly to you. And then you're saying, see, all women are like this. But then as you get to the middle, you get neutral. Okay, some women are pretty cool. Some aren't. You're kind of in the middle. Nice. Um, she was nice. She wasn't. You're kind of just open. And as your love and your joy starts to expand, you really begin to appreciate women, all, for, all of them, the difficult ones, the pain in the ass ones, the really sweet ones, the giving ones, as for men out there. Then what happens is you become a natural magnet for those types of women. You start seeing the beauty in women everywhere. And even if a woman, let's say she was grumpy that day, you might bring the best out in her because you were so open and loving and appreciative. And this doesn't just work with women. This works with everybody. This works with your, your friends, your family. This works with everybody around you. And that's the raising of consciousness. You're going from this unconscious reactive behavior, leading comfortable being with it, then learning to clean out that reactivity and then moving up to a conscious loving behavior with the idea really beginning to love all aspects of life and as as you begin to raise that consciousness and see more in people in life and situations and you begin to open more and more you become a magnet for the best things in life because that's what you'll be thinking about most of the time man there's amazing women out there can't wait to meet them and amazing women will show up in your life man there's business opportunities everywhere and people will show up with these amazing business opportunities Oh, wow. You know, I love exercise. The whole idea of, and you'll find just the right way to exercise for you because everybody's a little different. Whatever it is, you'll bring it into your life. You won't be fighting against life anymore. And you'll be part of the solution and not part of the problem. Now, if you want to learn more about letting go and releasing, you know, there's Dr. Hawkins book, like Dr. David Hawkins, letting go is Sedona method. But my course, the revealing process is a powerful course in this area where I walk you through in videos, all the different ways that I do this process. And, uh, and it'll be linked somewhere in here. Definitely check that out, uh, when you get a chance. And, um, and with that said, I did one more quick commercial and I got to put the commercials in. So just be with me for a second. Like, subscribe, share, do all that stuff. That's that's really my whole commercial. And make sure to comment. We love those comments. I want to see more of your comments about this. And I want to hear what you have to say. And I'm definitely check out the comments because it helps me to figure out what videos to create for you guys more. Now, with that said, hopefully you're getting the idea. It's all about you learning to stop. It's you learning to be open and then you learning to flow. So the process is really simple, really, when you think about it. Wherever you're unconscious, you probably have something you don't want to look at. You're in avoidance. You know, every time you think about it, you want to go do something else. You want to look at your cell phone. You want to go talk to somebody. You want to distract yourself. And so the first step is a little bit at a time, getting comfortable looking at that thing, even if you don't take action on it right away. Just, I'm gonna spend five minutes sitting and being with this thing that I don't wanna feel. If whether I journal about it, whether I sit down and consciously, and you gotta open your heart where you do it, you gotta feel that sense of an open heart. And if you guys don't know what that really means, definitely put a comment in the video. Maybe I'll do a whole video on opening your heart and maybe even a meditation. So you get your heart open and you just sit with it for five minutes. I might journal, I might meditate. I might just go out, let's say it's women again. I might go out where there's beautiful women and I watch myself get triggered and I just sit with it. I might do highs for 10 minutes or stops for, for 10 minutes and then sit down and be with the feelings that come up. And then notice the part of me that wants to distract. I might even let myself distract for a minute here and there when the intensity gets too much and then I'll come back and sit with it again and then go back and forth. The step number two is really getting neutral. Once I can sit with it, can I let go of all the attachment and the aversion to all the stories and the thoughts and the feelings, making it right, making it wrong, making it good, making it bad. Oh, I feel intensity on that, but I can look at it now. Now, can I let go of that intensity? Can I be with it? Can I let go of more of it? Can I let go of more? Because you can't release that which you can't look at. And can I let go of a little bit more? And then feel your heart opening more and more. And then the next part is, can I have love for it? Can I have appreciation for it? Can I have curiosity for it? Can I have joy for it? If you look back at Lester Levinson's work, you know, he worked on having love for everything. Everything he didn't like. Whether he thought it was right or wrong, he worked on having love for it. 
just because you have love for it doesn't mean it's right or wrong. It just means that you can see it clearly. And in that clarity, all the solutions showed up. That's why his life changed so much. That's why my life changed so much. As I started to learn to really love and appreciate all aspects of life, all challenges, all problems, as well as all solutions and all answers, life became more of a, a beautiful roller coaster ride of ups and downs, but overall up this giant life of expansion and in that life of expansion was a constant breath this in breath and this out breath this in breath this out breath of expansion into the best version of myself and life continues to be that way i'm finally reaching this point where there is no real solutions and there is no real problem this just experiences you have and there's going to be ups and downs and overall it's going to be up and there's nowhere to get. I was thinking about it. I was with a big bunch of entrepreneurs last week. I was out in Canada. I was up in the mountains in Lake Louise and it was gorgeous. I was in a hotel, the Fairmont. Some of you might know about it. If you do, definitely put a comment below. It looks like a castle from the 1800s or something like that, right? In between uh, two big giant rock faces, it's gorgeous. And uh, I was standing out on the lake where everybody was ice skating and then I was skiing and stuff. And I was at being asked by the, all, the, all the entrepreneurs, what do you want? And I'm like, I got most of what I really want, you know, a uh, good income, amazing people in my life, great experiences, travel, good health, lots of love, more experiences, I guess, but all in all, just really helping more people. And I think, and expanding and growing, you know, it's not like there's these major, like I got to go out and make a hundred million dollars. No, if I did. I would use it to help more people. It'd be great. But it's not like this crazy thing I have to have or I got to have this perfect woman or this perfect whatever, six-pack abs. I used to really want more muscles and six-pack abs, but I realized I really don't care that much. And I began to realize that life starts to become more of just a flow of one great experience to another. And you just enjoy the ride. And that's more and more of what I'm starting to experience. So I want to invite you into this idea that all the answers are really in letting go of the unconsciousness and raising your consciousness so you can see clearly with no attachment, no aversion. You can see clearly with an open, free heart. And it doesn't have to take a really long time to do. Now, with that said, hopefully you enjoyed this video. And remember, only the confident really live. I'll see you in the next video.